Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. They're off in the 2023 First Crop Sires race. Maximus Mischief makes the lead with the most two-year-old maiden special winners by any sire. On the backstretch, Matoli and Omaha Beach close the gap with stakes performers from coast to coast. Vino Rosso finds his best and leads on the turn with four grade one Colts on dirt. But it's Matoli with his third TDM Rising Star, your champion freshman, leading an impressive Spendthrift Superfecta. A top 10 first crop sire in 2023, standing at McMahon of Saratoga. 14 first crop winners, including My Shady Lady, My winner Shady of the $500,000 New York Stallion Series Fifth Avenue Stakes, Grade 2 winner, Winstock, and Stakes winner, Solo Shot, Solo Mini, the seventh leading freshman sire, and the only top 10 freshman sire with a Grade 1 or Grade 2 winner. He sired a $700,000 two-year-old at the OBS April sale. His juveniles sold for nearly six figures on average, more than 12 times the stud fee. Solomini, a controversial DQ from being a grade one winner by two-time horse of the year, Curlin, standing at McMahon of Saratoga Thoroughbreds. Ciao. Hey, John. How are you? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm sitting here. The weather's finally warming up, which is an odd thing to say in Florida. Enjoying my Shorebet coffee. Getting ready for the Fountain of Youth on Saturday, which I plan to drive over and watch. Nice. So it could, it could be worse. Yeah, I think it's supposed to get up to 60 here uh, by Saratoga this week. So uh, 60 here is freezing. Just yeah. so you know, um, I've I think been waking I'm up like at 60 degrees. Yeah, no, I've been waking up to like 55, 58 degrees and getting in the car and putting on the heated seats, the heated steering wheel, turning off the AC, cranking up the heat, freezing. So <laughs> probably seems that's comfortable probably for you. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I drove past the track a couple of times this week, just uh, being around town running errands and stuff and you know took the long way home past saratoga race course and i you know, feel like i'm willing the the springtime uh belmont stakes coming here and uh bringing the warm weather too so I'll have to yeah a couple more times this week and you know really drive the temperatures up belmont's going to be fun um be an interesting week up there uh we got a lot planned on past the wire tv for the belmont stakes so uh should be good. My biggest fear, I got two concerns about the Belmont. One, that they leave it a mile and a quarter if they move it back to Belmont or, or if they keep it up at Saratoga. I'd be fine with them leaving leaving it at Saratoga. I don't really care where they run it. It is the Belmont stake, so it makes sense to run it at Belmont. But the Jets and Giants play in New Jersey and they're the New York Jets and Giants, so I guess all that really doesn't matter. <laughs> but I think it should stay a mile and a half, but that's just me. And I'd hate to see them run the Met Mile consistently, which I don't think they can possibly do out of that ridiculous Wilson shoot. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I think uh, based on some of the rumors that I've heard, you know, obviously we're getting it this year. My guess is that we'll get it up here again next year. And then all the construction at Belmont should be done. So um, hopefully everything moves back down there. And, you know, yeah, I agree. I think that mile and a half is – um a unique distance and you know hopefully it stays that way yeah and construction on schedule is a tough bet that's a bet against man construction going <laughs> on schedule. that that that's you that's you, 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 you that's usually an over you know what i mean um especially in new york and when the government's involved but that that's any, anywhere anywhere it doesn't matter i don't care if we go to bismarck north dakota man they're behind schedule so that that's just it now, this is the Kentucky Derby radar show. We are in full Kentucky Derby prep points mode. I'm going to throw a curveball at you before we recap last week's races. 
All right. It's a horse that's made its way onto my Kentucky Derby radar. Okay. Uh, nobody's really talking about it yet and may not even point for the Derby. The horse is in England. Uh, his name is Notable Speech. He's owned by Godolphin. He's only run twice, uh, really against nothing. His last replay, his last race was at Kempton uh, on the synthetic. I watched the replay. It was a very, very educational race. I mean, he exploded and went through between between horses, was behind, behind horses and, you know, had to kind of like wait for a seam and then accelerate through it. So it was the kind of run that I like to see when I watch replays and, and look for derby horses because he showed that, you know, he could handle – not a not a not not a perfect trip, but I know how bad that Godolphin has wanted to win the Kentucky Derby. I know how bad they want to win it with a horse coming from Dubai. There was a time, probably before your time, but maybe 15, 20 years ago, where Sheikh Mohammed was buying every prospect. If you had a Derby prospect, you had to just wait for your phone to ring because he was going to offer you millions and millions of dollars, uh, and a lot of them sell, so, sold. You, you, you know. None of them won. So he may have a horse this year in notable speech that's derby worthy. Uh, I have, I have, you know, I follow the European racing pretty closely. Yeah. Uh, two different people told me two different things that were kind of said behind the scenes. Supposedly, now, rumors, smoke, there's fire, take it any way you want, but supposedly... Charlie Appleby might have made a call to the Sheikh saying, listen, if you decide to go that route this year, it might be a good year to do it. We got we got a loaded gun. Uh, William Buick, who's ridden some great, great, great horses in his career, uh, may have told somebody this horse has just about as much potential as any that I've ever sat on. Uh, if that's accurate or even close to accurate or, you know, you know, I'm a believe, you know, none of what you see, none of what you hear and half of what you see. So I don't, I don't know if that's exactly what, what, what happened, but that's the rumor and the replays. I mean, the horse has some talent, got a long way to go, but I suspect we may see him in the UAE Derby, which would make sense. Um, yeah. Punch his ticket to Louisville and see what happens from there. But Stay tuned. So notable speech, put him on a radar, maybe a little premature, may not go that way. But if he does, I would be remiss in not, not saying that there's a, there's, a, there's a buzz. And I personally like, like, like his last race a lot. All right. We're taking notes. Take notes. Write that, write that name down. Notable speech. He's by Dubawi, regally bred. I know it's turf, but. What's the difference? Turf horses run good over the Churchill Downs main track anyway, and Dubawis can run on anything as far as I'm concerned. The Dubai Millennium was 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 a monster. So, yeah, stay tuned. All right, you want to recap the Saudi races real quick, or yeah, we can we can do that. I mean, the, the Saudi Derby, I I I haven't seen. Oh, we're going to do the Saudi Cup first. That's fine. Um, the Saudi Cup. Hats off, Senior Buscador. I mean, the race was crying for a closer. A lot of times in those races where you see a ton of speed, everybody gets cute and takes back and somebody goes wire to wire. Brad Cox's horse almost did it. Looked like he was going to pull it off, you know, mid-stretch. But the speed took its toll. And, uh, you know, the Japanese horse came with a big run and Senior Buscador just, 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 Outgained him. I was very surprised. I, I I thought the race set up for a close-up. I thought White Barrio would sit in the pocket, get the trip, get the jump on the deep closers. Uh, he really had no gas in the tank by the by the time they hit the turn. But Senior Buscador fooled me a little bit. I knew he had the numbers to win. I knew he had the style to win. But he made that big, wide, sustained run in the Pegasus, and we were there. We watched it together. Came up a little short. I was surprised he was able to run that kind of race again, right back, ship into Saudi Arabia. And I got to say, that horse is a lot better and tougher than I thought he was. Hang on yeah. one second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think 
I agree with you. And I was kind of, kind of kicking myself for, for not, uh, not playing him uh, in the, in the Saudi cup, um, you know, hindsight's 2020, man. Yeah. You can't, you can't kick yourself over that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It happens, but you know, he did make a, a, a lot of sense. Well, why I couldn't get to him, like I said, was because I just thought it was very tough for a horse to run two efforts like that, you, you, you know, back to back, especially that quick. I mean, why the barrio was coming off two monster races and I thought he would run good, but he had a lot more time. Right. Right. Uh, but I thought it was a great race. Um, I think that Brad Cox's horse, Saudi crown is better than I thought. And, you know, national treasure, if you watch the replay, ran a very deceptively good race. I mean, he was, he hung tough at the end and, 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 uh, you know, uh, he doesn't really like to pass horses. He likes, likes to be in front. Um, and get brave and you know he'll fight it out and dig it out a little bit more when he's he's in front so i would expect him uh for the rest of the year to to to, to run in spots where they try and put him on the lead and, and and just hope for the best but we'll see yeah um i think i don't know national treasure already has his stud deal so uh you know it's kind of touch and go, <laughs> you know, every race right. might be, might be the last time we, we see him on the track. Um, well, but, you know, if all these horses continue to run throughout the year, I mean, the, uh, everybody was kind of criticizing the quality of the older horse division last year, but you know, you got white Barrio, Saudi crown, national treasure, Senor Buscador, you know, I mean, if these four continue to knock heads throughout the year like that, it should be some pretty exciting racing. Uh, I, I, I agree. And, you, you know, at the Breeders' Cup, you know, if this Ushba, you know, what's his name, the Japanese horse? Ushba. Yeah, Ushba Tesoro. Yeah, and even Derma Sotokage, you know, I can make an excuse for him. Uh, you know, he ran that monster race in the Breeders' Cup off that long layoff from the Derby. He's got every right to go forward. Uh, I thought it was a really good race. I thought it was a, a, a talented field. Uh, and I don't think that it's, you know, in February time to say that the older horse division is, is very weak. I think, like you said, it might be a little better than people give it credit for, you know, and there's a couple that we haven't even mentioned. So, uh, yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. All right. The, the other race on the, the card from Saturday that provided a bit of intrigue. Would you make it this one? Honestly, no disrespect meant to anybody, and everybody's got their own opinions. Was not impressed. Was yeah. not impressed with the winner. Was not impressed with the second horse. Uh, they both ran good races in a field I think was lackluster. Uh, I think Bookham Dano, the last eighth of a mile, was totally out of gas. I mean, completely out of gas. And if you watch close, I think Irad knew it because he was riding in a very, very – important prestigious race for big money and you know how irad gets down and digs he really didn't he was just like let's just get to the wire as best we can you know what i mean um and then that that's kind of what he did and there was no gas now the other horse what's what, what's his name forever young is that it yeah yeah forever together I, I, forever whatever um you know that horse came in two for two with a lot of hype looked to me very obviously that you know he didn't like the racetrack but and, you know, he went very wide. And at first watch, I said, wow, he went really wide and, you know, ran that horse down. But, you know, that was first watch. At second and third watch, I'm like, you know what? He didn't like the track. But even when he leveled off, I didn't like his action down the stretch, down the lane. I didn't like the way he looked running. Uh, he's got heart. You know, he was digging in. But he was digging in against a horse that had no fight and had nothing left. So that's, a, you know, a little deceptive in my book. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't think. Either either one of those horses looked to me like a Kentucky Derby type type type, type of horse. You know, both both looked to me like they want to go a shorter distance. And you know, again, I I I wasn't I wasn't impressed with either either one of them. Yeah, I mean, the race is only a mile. Um, you know, which um, you know, it's tough to to make any sort of you know real Derby prognostications off of a, a race of that distance. I think, and you know. <laughs> 
a lot of times I feel like these big international races, um, you know, people say stuff on, on social media just to, you know, project some, some sort of uh, level of intelligence. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I don't know. I mean, I don't, you watch more international racing than, than anybody. And I watch uh, not all that much. So uh, I've got no real opinion on, on that race because uh, I don't really know enough about all those horses. I mean, book of book of Dano's, seems to be fine when he when he's run stateside um but you know we'll see we'll see what happens but yeah i'm not running to the window to to bet him off off that um that that effort no i i i don't i don't think those horses are in and we're not even talking about all the contenders but you know i'm super high on sierra leone as i believe you are as well um yeah. i don't think those horses are in his league especially at a mile and a quarter yeah all right the the rebel the standalone sort of u.s kentucky derby prep from from saturday timberlake's return to the races and you know i guess he did what uh what we all thought he was going to do exactly i i, I mean I, I thought he was very good he ran very good he looked very good i mean he beat horses that he was supposed to beat even off that layoff uh, you know, Brad Cox brings them back ready. They're not short. They don't need one usually. Uh, you, you know, I don't think that you'll find many 1.2 or $1.3 million softer spots than, than that one was. Uh, but he got the job done like he's supposed to in a big field. Uh, again, not overly impressed. I think, you know, workmanlike, good effort. Uh can he be a factor in the Derby? You know, possibly. I tend to think that there are horses with a little bit more talent than him. But he's steady. He's right there. He's got some foundation and bottom to him. So, you, you, you know, if he goes forward off that race, uh, and I'm not looking at his patterns or anything right in front of me, but if he goes forward and can build off that, then, you know, maybe, you know, he can move into the top tier. But right now I kind of got him as like a second tier kind of horse. Yeah. I mean, he did go off at like three or four to one in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Right. I mean, the horse has a good amount of talent, and he runs his race. Um, right. you know, I think part of what people are saying in the the Breeders' Cup, you know, he didn't have an you know an ideal setup, and maybe it was a little bit disadvantaged um, going around the the track there. Uh, seemed to have everything his way in in the rebel um yeah i mean should should move forward i would imagine next would be the arkansas derby or perhaps they um i don't know brad cox tends to send a bunch of horses to keeneland too so you know maybe um end up in the bluegrass yeah. yeah so we'll see where he lands next but you know wherever he goes next i i can't imagine him being depending on who shows up, obviously I can't imagine him being worse than the favorite second or, you know, third choice at, at worst, um, moving forward. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and to, just to recap or, or, or backtrack a minute on, 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 on the Saudi horse, the Japanese horse, what I'm hoping with that horse is that they stay on the Derby trail, build up a lot of hype, a lot of people <laughs> yeah, of on that bandwagon and he takes a ton of money on the first Saturday in May, you know? Yeah. Um, it sounds like they're going to run him in the UAE Derby from what I was reading after the race. So, well, if uh, they do, if they do, they may, they, they may find out a little bit about notable speech. So we'll yeah. see, you know, what do you make of the rebel as, as a whole? I know the talk kind of going in, it was a little bit of a weaker race. And I thought it came up weak this year, you, you know, for, for especially with that kind of money on, on, on a line. Uh, I the, thought was, the second and third place finishers, you're kind of being a, a bit longer odds when that happens. Does that I feel like that tends to confirm it being a bit weaker or is it you know tough to kind of draw that that parallel just looking at the, the result? Um, I, this is going to sound like a terrible answer and maybe it is, but both, yeah. uh, I, I think, I think, yeah, it does. It does, you know, definitely create 
at least the optic of credibility that it was a uh, you know a, a, a weaker field um, or very at least a very wide open field. Yeah. Um, and I also think that you know you can argue that you know these are you know horses with not a lot of races and not a lot of experience. So you know how much how much can we really glean? You, you know. Um, yeah, you know, all of that will sort itself out as 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 as, as we go forward. Yeah, but I yeah. think the, there's a good chance, better, better, better than uh, you know, like likely chance that we didn't see the Kentucky Derby winner in either one of those two races. Right. All right, let's uh, let's dive into the Fountain of Youth here. Just uh, they drew this race a few days ago, so just kind of looking. yeah. They drew it. They drew it early. They 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 they, they drew it early, and it's an, it, it, in my opinion, it's an interesting race. It's a competitive race. Uh, you, you you know, I, I'll mention. Well, I'll wait till we get to him to mention it because I just thought one 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 particular horse. Well, two are in an odd spot, but but one especially. Uh, but let, let, let's talk about it. We 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 saw Speakeasy win on Pegasus Day. Yeah. Uh, he was impressive. He looked really really good. He looked talented. He looked, you know, he looked the goods. He you know he came he swoop swoop around those horses with authority. You know, ran very nice in the stretch. Uh, Gustavo Delgado's horse, who comes back strangely enough in this race, was on the inside, fought back against him. Couldn't couldn't you know, really get to him, but never stopped fighting. And uh, Speakeasy went on to win. He's got the rail. He's got speed. There's a lot of speed in this race, at least on paper. Uh, you know, we talked about briefly before when there's a lot of speed on paper, everybody sees that, including the jockeys, trainers, and owners. And a lot of times people decide to get cute, and whoever goes winds up being the only guy that goes, you know. And right. now you have, you have a horse, you know, out there by two, when everybody thought the race is full full of speed and the closers all of a sudden have no shot. So, yeah, you know, and, and it's almost impossible to predict that, you know, from a handicapping point of view when that's going to happen, you know, um, but it does happen a lot, you know, and it, and it happened in Saudi. There was a ton of speed on, on paper. All right. Saudi, Saudi crown didn't close the deal, but if memory serves correct, he got clear. Correct. I mean, he was out there on cruising, you know, nobody. Yeah, I mean, it looked like he was going to run off with it, but, you know, ended up getting caught. But, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, Speakeasy looked as, as professional as you could in the in a first career start, I, I thought. Um, right. Just you know, Butcher runs him right back, you, you know, in this spot. Uh, I think one interesting note on Speakeasy is – that race was on Pegasus Day. We know that Pletcher comes loaded on those big days. Okay. This horse didn't really get bet like one of the quote Pletcher good ones. Right. You know, now Victory Avenue garnered, you know, he had a lot of hype. Uh, those connections won the Derby with Mage last year. Mage, you know, broke his maiden on Pegasus Day. Everybody was looking for lightning to strike twice. Uh, so there was a, probably a lot of hype money on Victory Avenue, and that might have skewed the board a little bit. But regardless, Speakeasy did not get bet like a, a good Pletcher horse gets bet, and that might or might not be a tell, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, certainly, you know, if everybody's still buzzing about this Victory Avenue, you gotta like you gotta like Speakeasy in here as as well. I would tend to agree with that. I mean, both are eligible to go forward. Uh, you know, Gustavo Delgado is a very underrated trainer. He's a very, very good horseman. But I don't know that there are many, you know, there's a handful of guys that are just uber good first time out. You know what I mean? And, you know, Pletcher's one of them. You got to mention him as, you know, one of the top first time out trainers, you know, guys. Yeah. You know, like Pletcher, Bafford, you know, a bunch of guys are just, you know, deadly first time out. You, you, you know, so Victory Avenue might get a little edge in that in that category because, you know, he might have needed that race 
a lot more than Speakeasy did. So sure. let's see who, who goes for what. But again, pace-wise, looking at the two of them, looks like – and there's we're going to get to other speed too. Looks like there's, you know, should be. There should be a contested pace. Yeah, definitely. Le Dombro looked to me to be a, a cut below these. What did you think? Yeah, same. Uh, nothing – uh all that uh exciting in here really okay uh victory avenue you know a very very ambitious spot we talked a little about him when we talked about the horse on the rail speakeasy who beat him uh, a lot of hype this horse has you, you know connections looking to win the derby or get to the derby even two years in a row uh by arrogate has a, a world of potential very very lofty spot Last year, I kept telling Ramiro, my, my my friend, back off. Give him a confidence builder. Stop pushing. All right? It's a long year. He didn't listen. He knew better. He won the derby. You know? So I ain't saying a word. Ramiro, whatever you do is going to be the right thing. So they're going for this spot. Uh, they, know, they know what it takes to win a race like this. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, if you like to read into this sort of thing, uh, last week, this horse was a hundred to one in the Derby future pool, uh, or the, you know, the Derby future bet, uh, in Vegas. And as of yesterday, I think it was 55 to one. So, um, a lot of that maybe because he showed up in the fountain of youth. Right. Right. Once he entered, people said, oh, well, you know, let's take yeah, a Yeah. I mean. A lot of a lot of different things can can go into why the the odds would would essentially get cut in half. But um, if that's something that people like to read into, uh, along with the the early buzz that we've heard about this horse, you'd expect you'd expect him to to run big, like you said, ambitious spot uh, to you know still be be a maiden in here. Uh, but they got to. They got to finish in the top four, I guess, if they want to have a shot to to get into the Derby. So, I agree. Uh, Real Macho was interesting to me. Uh, you know, I, I got a little bit of a question mark knock on him, but you know, at first look, you know, Rohan Crichton, you know, wins a lot of races over there quietly, not quietly, whatever way you want to say it. But Reeves Thoroughbreds are great. Dean Reeves is a super nice guy. Uh, has a, a world of success, owned Mucho Macho Man, who won the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, he's had just a, a boatload of nice horses at, at every level, you know, uh, and spreads them around to different trainers. This horse is a horse that's going to be coming off the pace. So if the race has a lot of speed, you know, Gulfstream at a mile and a 16th plays against coming off the pace. You kind of got to be close or at least move early. Uh, that's a big knock. Uh but pace, you know, pace setup wise, this horse looks good. But what what would shy me away from him is that thus far in his career, you know, he run bad and he runs good. Then he runs bad. Then he runs good. He's yet to put two good races together. Uh, it didn't matter with Senior Buscador. But, uh, you, you know, I stick to my guns. I stick to how I see the pace and I stick to the patterns that I see more often than not. It'll be the right move. Uh, so that 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 that's a knock on this horse for me. But other than that, I think, you know, I think he's got some, some, some talent. Yeah. Um, I think there's a couple of others that are better in here. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, door knock. Yeah. Like this one. Um, you know, if anything, you know, we, we've, we've talked about this horse, uh, at length really, um, in, that Remsen win where he came back on Sierra Leone and, and got that victory. I mean, if anything, Sierra Leone really flattered this horse even more uh, with his win in the Risen Star. So uh, you'd have to. I mean, likely favorite. Okay. Yeah. The likely favorite. And, and you know, he's a horse that um, he's a full two mage. Won the Derby last year, right? Yeah. So you got Lightning looking to strike twice with the connections of Mage and their horse. And then you've got Lightning looking to strike strike twice 
uh, with a, with a, with a full going the, the the very next year, which is something that you almost never see. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, um, it's just interesting. Yeah, and he likes to be forwardly placed, so he'll he'll be a factor in the early parts of the race. And you know what he was able to do in the Remsen is what we want to see Derby horses be able to do, right? Battle on, fight back, really dig in and and put out you know a, a gutsy effort, and he did that. Um, you know, I think a lot of it too will, will come down to like, you've always talked about John, just how does this horse improve in his first start as a three-year-old? Um, so, you know, that, that's always a question. Um, we'll see though, like you said, the, uh, a full brother to, to mage who, you know, exploded early on in his three-year-old, uh, year. So, you know, if you're you're looking at that, no reason not to expect uh, Doorknock is sitting on another forward move and a, a big forward move. Really, he should he should go forward in his first start at three for sure. Okay, uh, he's a horse that likes to sit close and likes to even go on the lead. Uh, and Saez is aggressive, likes to go. You know, he went to the lead in the Remsen, but I think in the Sapling he showed that he doesn't need the lead. Uh, so he may be sitting a, a, a perfect trip and getting to jump on the closers. Um, I still think that Sierra Leone ran better than him in the Remsen, even though, he, you know, he came back and beat him. There's a lot of talk that, you know, he just, you know, had his number and was a better horse. I don't see it that way at all. I've explained that I thought Sierra Leone was green, made a big wide move, uh, and this was just, you know, was able to come back on the inside after the other horse kind of got to loafing and and just, you know, had a little bit of his his gas run out after making that big wide move, you know, as a, as a two year old. He again, you know, repeated that kind of move in the Risen Star. So, yeah, I, 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 I think Doorknock is a very talented horse. We know that the bloodline, you know, can win the Derby. They did it last year. It's a it's a it's a weird, you know, dynamic for you know two fulls to be you know derby contenders you know back to back and have a chance to win it uh i don't think that's ever happened before so at least not that i can remember and i kind of remember those kind of things uh i expect them to be ready to run and 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 run a big race uh and again he's got the luxury of not really having to win to stay on the Derby trail and stay in, at the head of the class. Cause it's his first start back. Uh, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but I think he's very dangerous. I think he's probably either him or I guess, or noted are going to be the favorite. Uh, I think, uh, I think pace wise, the edge might go to noted, but track wise, the edge might go to door knock because it's going to be tough. I, I'm sorry, locked. It's going to be tough for lock to come from as far back as he's going to be, but we'll get, we'll get, we'll, we'll get to him. What'd you think of merit? Um, I don't know. The way you asked that question suggests to me that, that you found some, some intrigue there. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not necessarily seeing it. Uh, you know, Safi Joseph does, you know, that's his home base. He, he wins these races, uh, but, you know, again, I just feel like there's uh, better horses in here, you know, especially, you know, the, the early parts of the race, it just feels like this horse is a little bit slower than, um, than some of the others and not, not somebody I'll be uh, uh, backing. I could see that. Uh, what 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 intrigued me about him uh, is that, yeah, it's Safi, and Safi is deadly at Gulfstream. Uh, I I just think he's a horse that is going to be in the spot where I think it's likely the winner's going to be. You know, um, second, third, fourth, but close enough to get the jump 
on the deep closers and 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 ride that Gulf Stream mile in the sixteenth. Got to be close bias, um, you, you, you know, to the wire. Good enough to win. I don't know. It's a big ask, you know. And there are definitely horses that you know look like they could be faster than him, but he's not exactly slow either. So, and these horses at this time of year make big jumps. Uh, yeah. You know, we've never got a chance to see this horse run second off the bench yet. You know what I mean? So this is his first chance to run second off a layoff. I find him intriguing. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little concerning to me. And you know, maybe your handicapping wisdom can uh, fill in some of the blanks here. But, you know, first start at, at seven furlongs, second start at a mile. They put a five furlong work into them uh, before that mile effort in early February. They've got, and that the horse weakened, you know, his late pace figures were, were not, not very strong. Um, so that's a turnoff for me. They put another five furlong work into them uh, a couple of days ago, um, which was a little bit faster than, than the one that they had on January 26th. But I don't know the the stretch out in distance and distance and getting a little weaker towards the end of the the late stages of the race is um, not ideal in my opinion. But you know, perhaps you know you know better than I do. Um, if that that's well, you know, I, I, I would agree. look at it a little differently. Yeah, I would look at it that off a layoff, going a mile, and battling all the way on the lead he was entitled to weaken a little bit late and slow down possibly needing the race okay uh so he might be a lot tighter with that one under his belt you know what i mean okay. um and you, you know once once it was over for the win zayas might have just said okay you know what i mean he got what he needed out of this race you know he'll be tighter next time and you, you, you know no point in 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 beating him up and 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 getting every last you know ounce out of him when that race obviously wasn't the goal it obviously was they were pointing for this uh, i don't think safi would run him here if he didn't think he's progressing off that race so i really wouldn't read too much into that in this particular case now normally we don't like to see a horse who's slowing down late you know what i mean uh, but this, this, in this case, you know, he was head and head fighting for the lead, uh, off the layoff, stretching out. I give him a pass, you know what I mean? Might've needed the race and might be going forward. And that's why handicapping is more art than science in some cases. That's true. And, 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 and sometimes luck helps. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, this Frankie's Empire was uh, a little interesting to me. Um, I liked the, you know, I go off of Brisnet a lot, and I know we're we're looking at um, we're looking at the the DRF here, but on well, the it's Brisnet, good, it's a good contrast because I use Formulator, you use Brisnet, and that, so it's 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 good contrast. So on Brisnet, uh, career best ninety three. Um, speed figure in in the swale when he won, and that was uh, you know paired a, a career top uh, going back from the the end of December right after Christmas to wrap up his two year old season. So the paired tops and and kind of equaling his best performance uh, from two, equaling that at three. I think this horse is sitting on. Uh, a step forward and should be in the mix here. Uh, I think, you know, this will be the first time kind of stretching out, uh, assuming over a fast track beyond a mile. Uh, but, you know, classic empire, pioneer of the Nile, uh, no reason not to think that uh, the added distance shouldn't be right in, in his wheelhouse. Um, but mostly I like the, the pairing of the the two top numbers, um, and I think he he's sitting on a, another step forward, which puts him in the mix. A, a lot a lot of things I like about him. If I mean, if you throw out the grass race and the muddy track race, he's never run bad. Okay, yep. 
uh, second time in a new bond, Michael Yates. And if you go back over the past couple of years, Michael Yates has jumped up on these big days and won a couple of these races with big price horses. OK, uh, I don't remember the names off the top of my head, but I remember he's jumped up and won some 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 races with with, with, with big price horses a little under the radar. This horse gets the right setup with all the speed. He's going to be coming from the far back. But again, Gulfstream's mile in the 16th plays against that stop. So, you know, that's that's that that's tough, you know. But, yeah, I think he's got a lot to like. Uh, and, you, you know, another big positive, in my opinion, is the two mile races at Monmouth and Delaware, the, the, the sapling and the Rocky Road. OK, or, 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 you know, well, the Delaware one was a muddy one, so we're going to throw that out. But the sapling was on a fast track. He ran OK. You know, he got a, a piece of the money. But, you know, those are two turn races. So he's stretching out. But a mile to a mile and a 16th when you've already been around two turns. Is not really a lot more to ask of, of a horse. So, uh, yeah, he's got he's got he's got some positives. I think the main thing that goes against him is 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 this race is at Gulfstream, and uh, you, you know, it's unfortunate when a track is that biased that it's so tough to overcome that deep closer um, style. You know, which is why when we get to the next horse locked, I'd say. You know, maybe the week was important to Todd, or maybe he just liked to stay home with this horse for whatever reason, but wouldn't locked have looked a lot better in the rebel than here. I don't know. Yeah. I think this Frankie's empire, you know, if you look, he's not far off the leaders, you know, he's early in the, the swale, he was sixth and fourth and then, and kind of took over at the top of the stretch. But, you know, he was only a, a length off the lead there. Um, so, and you can kind of tell in the in the hands of Michael Yates, it seemed like the race tactic was a bit different than than the prior two. So I would expect this horse to be in the mix early. Uh, you know, he put out some fast fast fractions in the in the last seven furlong race, um, and and was right up there. So um, I would expect this horse to kind of be in 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 the front half of the field and, you know, to your, to your earlier point, uh, on right merit, spot. I think, yeah, could, could be in, in the right spot. I think those race tactics seem to change in the swell and it worked out for him. So, uh, I think he'll be a bit more forwardly placed to kind of replicate that effort and, you know, should be sitting in a, in a decent spot, I think. No argument. Um, What's your take on Locked? Now, Locked, I think, obviously, Jose Ortiz was committed to him, and that's probably why he didn't ride Sierra Leone. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, another one, you know, he went off as the favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. By all accounts, if ran... You, uh, if, you, if you remember, that's the one that they really liked. Yep. When we were on the rail watching them all train, that's the one that, you know, the whole Fletcher crowd was kind of kind of talking about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's – if you look at the – his first maiden race, he was way back. Uh, if you look at the, the second race at a mile where he broke his maiden at Saratoga, more forwardly placed – uh, the Breeders' Futurity at, at Keeneland, a little bit more forwardly placed, you know, uh, four lengths off the lead early on. Uh, and then, you know, it just seemed like in the the Dur uh, the Breeders' Cup, you know, he really kind of didn't really find his footing until late in that race. And, uh, you know, Fierceness ran a big one and, you know, probably uh, left himself a little bit too much to do. But I guess my point is I don't think he wants to be that far back. It just so kind of happened that he found himself a bit further back in the Breeders' Cup than he probably wanted to be or anticipated. So, again, I feel like this horse should be a bit more forwardly placed and be in the mix and not have a ton of work 
not leaving himself a ton of work to do uh, towards the end. I disagree with that. I think <laughs> I well, that's what makes a horse race. I think he's going to be at the back of the pack and make one big late run and have a lot to do. Uh, and I'm not saying he can't do it, you know, because a couple of these horses, you know, coming out of the sprints, you know, and, and we'll do a quick rundown before before we wrap up of everybody. But it's 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 going to be tough. You, you, you know, I, 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 I think that the race at Saratoga where he broke his maiden was on that Wilson shoot. They went 47 to the half, 112 for three quarters. You know, that's that's not going to be fast enough to be in, you know be within five lengths of, of the pace here which is probably going to be 46 you know maybe even 45 on at Gulfstream if the track is super fast but certainly 46 you know what I mean so he's going to be five eight nine ten lengths back you know depending on traffic uh maybe even more he may just settle at the, at the back I also think that you know he's got some points I guess from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, they get some points for that race. I don't even know. I would imagine yeah. they get a couple. Uh, yeah. Breeders' Futurity, that grade one he won. I don't know if he gets any points for that or not. Maybe, you know. But he'll get a couple of points if he hits the board here. And I think, you know, he'll grind his way in um, and and have a better shot there. Um, I like him. I think if it was, this race was run over a different track, he, you know, a very good chance I'd land on him. But uh, at Gulfstream, that's an awful lot for him to do if I'm right about where he's going to be and you're not. I mean, if you think he's going to, if this pace is going to be 46, 46 and change to the half, this horse has never run that fast in his life. Right. And I'm so, pretty sure it'll be 46 and change. You don't think so? I'm no, I, I agree with you on that, but wouldn't, wouldn't that suggest that this horse, you know, he's never run that fast before that should discount his chances. No. No, because he, he he's he, he's going to be sitting behind them. He's going to have to run fast late, not early. You know what I mean? It's a half mile, not going to matter. Um, if those horses are tired from 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 running that first half, you know he's one of the ones I think is going to be motoring down the lane. Yeah, we'll see. I think he's going to be a bit more in the mix, but um, I guess we'll find out. I think if you're right about that, he's going to be a handful to, to hold off. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to think if the um, being far back, being in whatever, you know, post position eight, I don't know. Is that a is non -factor. that a non-factor? Um, you know, I don't know. If he just leaves himself too much to do towards the end, uh, Given the way the track plays, I think it'd be more advantageous to to be up closer. And he's had two races in the past that have worked out well for him where he's been closer. Um, so that's how I would look at it. All right. <laughs> we'll see. Right. We'll find out real soon. Uh, so Dancing Groom. Yeah. Looks a couple low. Yeah. I yeah, mean, Sano cool. is a sneaky guy that wins at a big price, but looks a couple low to me. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All right. So where where did you land in here? I don't know. I don't really I, – I, I can't really say that I land anywhere at this point. You know, yeah. I, I – you, you know – to me, a race like this, I won't decide where I land probably until, you know, midway through the card, watching the races and seeing if the track is, you know, honest enough to give some of these closers a, a, a fair shot. Uh, I think that, you know, I'm probably not going to land on Speakeasy. I'm probably not going to land on Victory Avenue because both of those would really have to be second comings in order to get the job done in a spot like this. Uh, you know, door knock is a possibility for me. You know, Michael Yates horse is a possibility for me. Safi Joseph's horse is a possibility for me. And Todd's horse is a possibility for me. So I'm going to probably land on one of those four. And that decision will probably be based on 
you know, how to track his playing and, you know, what I see earlier on. You? Yeah, I would would tend to to agree with with that. You know, I think there are a, a variety of, of horses that would not be surprising if they won. Um, but again, you know, many, many, many days out, it's it's tough to to pinpoint um, you know, who we're who we're going to play, but you know, I would I would lean uh this you know victory avenue uh or uh frankie's empire you know locked and in, in door knock uh the top two choices obviously um but you know again it's just if you're you're wanting to get a, a little bit of a of a better price you know i i would look i would look to the victory avenue is a gutsy pick gutsy pick in this spot I mean, yeah. I'd love to see it for Ramiro and for, for Gustavo, but uh, gutsy pick. Going to close out with an interesting thing, if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to take credit for this because I didn't know it, but Reynolds Worman, a good friend of mine who's a bloodstock agent in Lexington, Kentucky, and a very good one at that. So if you're looking for a bloodstock agent and you want to get in touch with Reynolds, give me a call. But he pointed out something. Forever Young, that's the Japanese horse that run in, in, in Saudi. Forever Young's dam, Forever Darling, is a half-sister to Heavenly Love, who is Sierra Leone's dam. Um, and it's, you, you know, pretty pretty interesting and somewhat remarkable that both of them uh, won big races back-to-back -back, um, on, on two weekends apart. So we were talking about some weird idiosyncrasies Uh and that's that. That's another one. Well, we'll all start uh, hammering into the the pedigree stuff as the Derby gets closer. Um, you know, I remember my dad always talking about that dosage number. Uh, right. They don't even mention dosage yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't so. even hear that. It, it used to be you had to have the dosage to win the Derby, or you couldn't yeah. win it. And now, yeah. um, they don't even mention it i i remember there was a whole section in the racing form do you remember that yeah. the dosage the dosage every horse had to have that that that, that dosage you didn't have the dosage you couldn't win yeah. then one one without it and then another one without it, and then all of a sudden it's a non-issue yeah yeah same like uh the curse of apollo and then justify uh right. ruin that and nobody brings that up anymore well, I always say that, you know, stats are overrated and underrated at the same time. You know, they mean something, but like we say in the NFL, on any given Sunday, it don't matter. If, you know, guy wins one out of 100 with first-time starters and you bet that one that day and we're right, so what? What does the stat mean? Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, and all of those things go down. The Apollo thing was was – going to go down at some point and there was a couple of chances you know you know it could have gone down before that i think if pulpit didn't get hurt in the derby it might have gone down that year so who knows yeah all right good uh good preview of the the fountain of youth and there's a couple of more uh derby preps uh the same weekend so uh i'm sure we'll be back later in the week with more previews of those races as well Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you like the show, subscribe. We got a lot more stuff coming out, new people coming on the show. Jeff Metz is doing interviews. We got a couple of more people coming on. Uh, great stuff coming for the Belmont. Uh, subscribe, hit notifications so you don't, you, you know, you don't miss anything. Anything you want to see, anything you don't want to see, anything you think, want to talk about, put it in the comments so we know and we'll, 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 we'll talk about it. So, that's a wrap. Ciao, ciao. So this long. horse is a monster. And uh, <laughs> just, you know, physically nice. an, an yeah. imposing horse. It's going to be 77 days since his last race. Um, hasn't, missed, hasn't missed a workout either, looks like. I think he's, I think he's sitting on uh, a huge race. I'm all in on Sierra Leone. Extremely high on on, on on Sierra Leone, and his pattern and numbers do not 
sway me from 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 that position. Now again, we can't pick the Derby winner today, but like I was about to say, if you put a gun to my head uh, and said I had to pick the Derby winner uh, on February 15th, I would say Sierra Leone. Hey, sure bad coffee. Mm. Put that giddy up in your cup. That giddy up in your cup. Sure bad coffee. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Mm. You want horsepower? We've got the sire power. Central banker, New York's leading sire three years in a row, standing at McMahon of Saratoga. He has 12 black type winners, morning including multiple stakes winners and graded stakes placed clear. Banquet, Morning, morning matcha, matcha, and Bank Stink. Central Banker, sire of six figure yearlings and two year olds. He produced nine stakes runners in 2023. Runners have earned $20.5 million on the track. Central Banker, standing at McMahon of Saratoga Thoroughbreds. They're off in the 2023 first crop sires race. Maximum Mischief makes the lead with the most two-year-old maiden special winners by any sire. On the backstretch, Matoli and Omaha Beach close the gap with stakes performers from coast to coast. Vino Rosso finds his best and leads on the turn with four grade one colts on dirt. But it's Matoli with his third TDN Rising Star, your champion freshman, leading an impressive Spendthrift Superfecta. here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. Horses to watch and favorites to fade. Ten fakes, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Jackie's Warrior, quickly in front here by two lengths. Here comes Jackie's Warrior up the inside to take over the lead from Life is Good. 
and Jackie's Warrior remains undefeated here at Saratoga, and he wins an unprecedented grade one stakes at the Spa for the third straight season.